Hello, I'm Diego. Today I'm here in Paris with Sergio. Uh, Sergio, thanks very much for joining us. Hi, Diego. It's a pleasure to be here. If you can start telling us a little bit about yourself and about uh, Heidenberg, please. Yeah, so Heidenberg Materials is now the biggest heavy industry building materials producers in the world. Based in Germany, uh, with a, fo a footprint uh, in more than 50 countries. And uh, working uh, on uh, making cement, concrete, aggregates and even asphalt more sustainable day by day. Meaning that uh, we strongly believe that if we want to keep our business running and if we want to keep the industry running itself, it's also through sustainability that we need to achieve our targets. Evo Zero was presented as the world's first carbon net zero cement. Could you please walk us through on his development? So uh, we believe that Evo Zero is really marking kind of a red line for what is before and what is after. Uh, we've been talking a lot about decarbonization of our supply chain and uh, in the building industry, we really need to start from the foundations, literally from the materials that are making the foundations. So could it be the concrete, could it be the cement? And this is exactly what we're focusing now. For the first time, available at scale, we have a full-scale cement plant running with a carbon capture equipment on top, meaning that we are able to take away CO2 at the tail of the production process. We are able to deliver the same quality, the same performance, the same feature of the cement. So there is no need to make any kind of update to the building codes, you can design, you can do whatever you're doing in terms of using it. And at the same time, you're taking away the CO2 footprint for the material, which is a kind of big breakthrough for us. Because if you take a look at all the CO2 roadmap of all the cement organization, being at the national level, European or even global level, everyone is talking about using the CCS as one of the key levers. And this is exactly what Evo Zero is about, is a carbon capture and then storage. And this is happening right now as we speak in Breivik, Norway, where we are capturing CO2 and at once the plant is running at full speed, uh, we'll be able to capture about 400,000 tons of CO2 per year, which is quite a big number. So we're not talking about a small scale impact, we're talking about a big scale impact. And we, have, we believe that this will have also a kind of material uh, benefits for the building industry, again, starting from the foundation, starting from cement, starting from concrete. And can you tell us a little bit about your vision, how the building materials industry can contribute with the decarbonization. If you just go around every single city in the world and you just take a look to whatever you see, you will see something that, it will be made, that has been made with cement and concrete. It's a local raw material, it's available, uh, it's relatively simple to use uh, and it's been there since decades and decades now. So cement and concrete is here and is here to stay. The point is how can we make it sustainable and how can we make it uh, the future proof material? And that's exactly what we are talking about and talking about sustainable solution because we really need to be aware that we need certain volumes of cement, certain volumes of concrete to build up our society, mm -hmm. to build up our cities, our hospitals, our infrastructure. And at the same time, we need to build up our future, meaning that if we want to keep everything together, we need to be sustainable, we need to leverage on the know-how, on the technology, on the best-in-class available solutions that we can think about when going in the direction of being more sustainable. And when we talk about uh, technology, what is the key developments that you hope to see in the upcoming years? I would more to hope to see more widespread. Because if you talk about, for example, carbon capture, if you talk about, for example, alternative fuels, if you talk about different ways of having the same quality for the material in a sustainable way, it's already there, it's already available. The point is, how fast can we scale this up? Because if you talk about, for example, carbon capture, we now using a mine technology, we can already do it. We are already doing it. The point is we should be able to scale it up as quick as possible because if you want to deliver an impact sooner than later, this is what exactly what to do. So in terms of technology, we see carbon capture working very well. We see, for example, alternative fuels working also very well. And we also see on the product side, so for example, for the cement sector, uh, using less clinker or using less CO2 intensive material, also a way to decarbonize and to give a bit of, uh, I would say, future proof, sorry, uh, perspective to the industry and to the materials itself. And when it comes to the European regulation, how much this impact your decarbonization efforts? Uh, heavy building materials is a heavily regulated environment. And that's kind of, you know, a no brainer, because if you want to build something that is supposed to last for 100 years, 50 years, a long time frame, long time span, you need to be careful, you need to work and you need to have a deep knowledge of what you're doing, right? So from a European regulatory perspective, we believe that the things can be, for example, done faster. So for example, recognizing that there are now solutions already in the market like carbon capture that is available, 
So recognizing, for example, that embodied carbon, low embodied carbon can be one of the criteria in the European procurement, for example. Or we can also work about, think about uh, having European regulation following the industry, right? In a faster pace. Mm -hmm. Because now, and this is not just us, it's a kind of regular, I would say, trend that we see, industry is running much faster than regulators. So we need regulators to keep up, we need regulators to think about the future, and we need regulators to think about the solutions that are already available now to make it more sustainable tomorrow. Beyond technology, right? Collaboration across the value chain is very critical, I believe. Yeah. Uh, how are you engaged with developers, contractors and investors to promote and the adoption of sustainable construction practice? Well, I think that you mentioned kind of key point that is the value chain. Huh? I mean, we cannot decarbonize the industry alone. So it's not just a material perspective, building material perspective, is also having, for example, onboard investors, developers that share the vision that we can do something better, that is possible to do it now, and we, that, that, should, that should activate, we should act, right? So having the value chain, as for example, we can see here a lot of investors, a lot of developers talking about uh, the impact of the carbon on their business, talking about the climate change risk for their business, talking about how the assets can be made future-proof. That's really how the value chain is developing. And this is why we believe that being the first part in terms of when the building is, is made of the supply, we can have really have a material impact also, on the, of, of course, on all the value chain. Last question, what do you see as a main benefit of being part of the GRI Institute? Well, you know, when you are in the, at the GRI, you can meet other actors of the value chain that sometimes are not your typical day-to-day -day business partner. Huh? And if you think about the perspective of a building material, producer, typical tier one customers are contractors or general contractors, not so likely it's investors or developers. And here is exactly what we can find here. Investors, developers, up in the value chain, able to influence what goes then downstream. Mm -hmm.